prerequisite conditions. Prerequisite conditions. You must have network connectivity between sites. I would say that most of the problems I've had with data guard environments have been to do with network connectivity. Things as basic as making sure you don't have firewall restrictions between sites. Sometimes firewalls will break idle sessions. That sort of thing can cause problems. You need reliable network connectivity. A lot of network tuning comes into it as well. You know, we have to ensure that our system administrators have configured the networking, not just so it works, but so it works well enough. Reliable, fast network connectivity is vital. Then, some very basic things. Compatible environments on both sides. Now, there is a certain amount of cross-platform configuration, uh, cross-platform capability. For example, you could have the database on one side running under Linux, the database on the other side running under Windows. That works. I've proved that several times. I've worked in environments. We've done that. Physical standby on Linux, and then, sorry, physical primary database on Linux, physical standby on Windows, and you can do a role reversal. We'll do it the other way around. Primary on Windows, standby on Linux. That works no problem at all. Um, you can also, depending on your release, depending on your release, Solaris on Spark will interoperate with AIX on PowerPC. And I've never seen it working, from my own experience, but it's documented that it does work. You can go from Solaris on Intel to Linux. So there's a limited cross-platform capability. The general rule is clear, and I'm sure some of you have worked it out. Intel CPUs are little, little endian as everybody else, Spark, PowerPC, and so on, they're big endian And that appears to be the significant difference. But there are also some more platform variations. For example, going from Spark to AIX, there are some extra steps involved. But in principle, there's a certain amount of cross-platform capability. Now, why would you want to use that? Platform migration. Platform migration. Now, you might well find, perhaps, your current environment is you have a database single instance on Windows. And for whatever reason, you want to go to a rack running on Linux. And you can't stand any downtime. Well, you can do that. Use your single instance Windows database as the primary. Create a rack physical standby on Linux, no downtime for that, and do a switchover. And the switchover, as I mentioned on the previous slide, can be single digit minutes. And that will give you a huge change in platformed environments with virtually no downtime. So the environment must be compatible, but it doesn't have to be the same. The hardware can be completely different. Now, this can be a nice way to go from file system storage to ASM storage, for example. The Oracle homes, which we assume for this stage of the course are already installed, must be identical to four levels. I'm using 12.1.0.2. Um, I'm sure some of you are aware that 12.2, 12C release 2, is now available. It was available for public download, I think, from, I think from yesterday. Uh, we've been working with 12.2 for a few months now, but it's only been available on the cloud, on Oracle Cloud up till now. We've done a lot of work using 12.2 on the cloud in preparation. It's very exciting now that as of yesterday, you can download 12.2 for on-premises licenses. And if any of you are interested in investigating some of the 12.2 new features, there are some pretty nice ones that we would like to help people introduce. Now. Even though the software, the Oracle Home, must be the same to four levels, you can use rolling application of CPUs, PSUs, patch set updates, critical patch ups, you know, critical PSUs, you can apply in a rolling fashion. But at four levels, the patch set level, it needs to be identical. There is a way around that, a way around that if you use the logical standby that we're not going to talk about today. Logical standby, you can use zero downtime upgrade from say 11 to 12, but not with physical standby. So that's your prerequisite conditions. And in my case, everything should be there 
already. So, John, can you talk for a moment, quick moment, just about uh, some licensing, licenses on both sides, and how does that work? You definitely need licenses on both sides. Um, there's a bit, yes, that's... Sometimes people will give you wrong information about that. The machines on both sides must be licensed. However, and DataGuard itself is included within the Enterprise Edition license. So, for example, if you have a machine that is licensed and you want to, maybe that awful situation that many of you are in, I'm sure, where you have a database that's used for both OLTP work, transaction processing, and you want to run big queries against it, very difficult to tune for that environment. Very difficult to tune for both transaction processing and large-scale queries. Using DataGuard, you could, for example, leave your production database unchanged for transaction processing and create a logical standby on the same machine. Optimize that logical standby as a data warehouse. Different partitioning strategies, different indexing strategies, different materialized views. A separate logical standby, but on the same machine. You don't pay one cent for that. Because you license the machine, not the database, or what you're using it for. 